Good morning everyone and welcome to Mosaic Church Online. I hope you've all had a fantastic week and we cannot wait to get this morning started. But before we do, let me just encourage you to comment, like and subscribe to this video and to our YouTube channel and share it to as many people as you possibly can. And just to bring an encouraging thought before we go into worship, my hope this morning is that every household that is tuning in is filled with joy. Psalm 16 verse 11 says, you will show me the way of life, granting me the joy of your presence and the pleasures of living with you forever. To have joy means to have a deep longing for God. In C.S. Lewis's book, um, Surprised by Joy, he describes experiencing an otherworldly joy. He says that this joy creates in us a deep longing for God and a desire to understand his heart, which is never ending and far more satisfying than any earthly happiness. The Holy Spirit uses this longing to awaken a spiritual hunger inside of, inside of us for a deeper relationship with God, a fire which burns in our heart, pushing us to pursue him. Carrying on the theme of C.S. Lewis, I'm gonna read a quote from a mere Christianity. If you want to get warm, you must stand near the fire. If you want to get wet, you must get into the water. If you want joy, power, peace, eternal life, you must get close to or even into the thing that has them. I hope that every person watching this morning is filled with joy this morning. So let's take refuge as we worship. Let's take refuge in God's presence this morning. Let's welcome in him into our homes and let's let the joy of the Holy Spirit fill our hearts and ask him to reveal his endless goodness to us.
all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these boards will sing.
My bones, you're about to move. I feel it in the wind, you're about to ride in. You said that you would pour your spirit out. You said that you would fall on sons and daughters. So come.
worship. For me, it is one of the things I miss so much about a Sunday morning is being able to worship together in a room full of lots of amazing people. And so I'm so grateful that our worship team have been able to produce such an amazing time of worship that gets to be in, the, in my home every Sunday morning. So thank you so much for that. I just want to remind you of all the things we have coming up today. So straight after the service at 12 p.m. it is Kids Church and it's always amazing. My kids absolutely love it. So if you have children, do not miss out on that. 12 p.m. on YouTube. And then later on tonight at 6 p.m. we have Mosaic at 6, which now goes live on YouTube and on Facebook. And then on Monday morning it will be on our Instagram page as well. So don't forget to tune in to, to that and to Kids Church at 12 p.m. And if you are not connected in the church, not connected to anyone and you are missing that connection, then we have so many ways that you can connect. Through I Identity Youth, IDY, if you are a youth and you are missing out, then please, please get connected to our Identity Youth team. Um, connect groups, we have tons of connect groups. If you do not know one or want to be a part of one, please get in touch and um, we will put you in um, the right direction for a connect group. And the Hope Centre, there's lots going on at the Hope Centre still. So um, yeah, if you need to get connected, we have tons of, way, tons of ways for you to do that. Um, and now we're about to see um, what is going on in the life of Mosaic Church. Good morning, Mosaic Church. Uh, welcome to the Hope Centre's food bank storeroom. This is where I have spent most of lockdown. Um, I've got a few facts and figures for you. We have been open as a food bank for 149 days since lockdown. We have had about seven and a half thousand hours here in total. Um, since starting, we have done 4,443 vouchers. 
feeding 9,463 people. Some of you might know that I like to do the odd little video and uh, mostly asking for donations for the food bank and we've had such a wonderful response. We've had over 15 and a half thousand kilos of food donated here so that we are really blessed by you and the local community but we can then go on and bless others so thank you. Um, it's wonderful to work here as part of the Hope Centre team. Um, we have been really blessed. Um, not one of us has had a, any related illnesses to Corona. Uh, so God's got his hand on us um, so that we can then go and bless the community. During lockdown, we've been engaging with men that have been coming in uh, via food bank. We've been looking uh, after men that have a variety of issues from drug and alcohol dependency to isolation and above all during this time, mental health issues. We've been working, uh, doing one-to-ones and also having a few that have been coming to a Life Healing Choices Ministry on Thursday evening. We've also engaged with a Christian rehab uh, centre in Wales where a few of the men have gone down and since come back with great moves in, their in each life. It's been a privilege to get to know each man uh, and seeing how they're getting on, but more so to see how much uh, God is working in each of their lives. So in recognition of the services that we provided through the first lockdown with our food bank provision, the government um, gave us funding to launch our Hope Hub project, which we launched in November last year. <clears throat> and this has allowed us to develop a lot of services as an add-on feature to help people through the crisis. So part of that is we've adapted the Resilience Project, which means that we can offer one-to-one -one support to some of the people with the most complex needs who come through our centre. This could be um, just checking out their eligibility for benefits or grants or almost anything else. And in addition to this, we can also offer one-to-one -one support in job coaching. Uh, we do money management and budgeting. We also run a weekly support group for people who wish to sort of tackle any life controlling issues that they've got um, and then we've also got through this funding the ability to refer people for professional one-to-one -one counselling and we've got this available through the project as well. We've also continued some of the work that was going on in the church through the afternoon tea um, team. So Julie Scanlon um, helped us to deliver over 35 uh, fully prepared and cooked roast dinners in December and January and we're going to continue this in February and March. And we've been continuing with our baby clinic on a Wednesday morning where we've got some uh, brilliant NHS health visitors who come along and work with vulnerable families, families who are new into the country and we're able to engage with them about their health issues but also look at other um, issues that we can help them with. That's it? Yeah. And lots more. Yeah. <laughs>
We've now reached the point in our service where we have opportunity to give of our finances. Before we do that, I'd like to read to you from Psalm 24, a Psalm of David. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and all its people belong to him. For he laid the earth's foundations on the seas and built it on the ocean depths. It's often hard for us to view everything that we have in our possession as actually belonging to God, especially when we've worked incredibly hard for all that we have. In Deuteronomy 8, God says that it is by his hand that we are able to make wealth. We are called to be stewards and not owners of everything that we have in our possession. Joseph understood this and understood what it meant to have the role of a steward. And because of this, God trusted him with all of the resources in Egypt. Essentially, he had more influence and power than any of a 30 year old of his time or any that had come before him. The temptation for Joseph must have been incredible, but Joseph chose to honor God, not just with all that he did, but all that he had. So I encourage you all this morning, as David did, let's put our resources and skills on God's altar and let's be expectant for God to do great things through all that we do and all that we give. If you'd like to give, please log on to www.mosaicchurch.co.uk forward slash give and there you have plenty of opportunity and ways that you can give um, to Mosaic Church and into the kingdom of God. I now have the opportunity of introducing our speaker for today, who's gonna to be carrying on the series of Thrive and talking to us about how we maintain spiritual health under challenging circumstances. So grab a cuppa, grab a notepad, grab your Bible, be encouraged and being challenged as I welcome Helen to speak to us this morning. Good morning, church. I've been loving this series on Thrive. I'm sure you have too. And this morning I wanna focus on becoming spiritually strong. Now we are complex beings, aren't we? Yet we are created by a living God in his image. He gave us a body. We have a mind and a will and emotions. Many people refer to that as the soul. But God, who is spirit, created us in his image as spirit beings. And it is in our spirit that we connect with God. Jesus said to the woman at the well, God is spirit and those who worship him will worship him in spirit and truth. This is what gives our lives meaning and purpose. But everything is interconnected. Everything is part of the whole. So when we're strong spiritually, it will significantly affect our emotions. It will significantly affect our mental health. And in turn, it will affect our physical health. It's the way God created us. Life is hard. I don't think you need me to tell you that. It can be challenging. It brings with it many stresses. We haven't got to heaven yet, in case you hadn't noticed, we live in a fallen world. In fact, it is a war zone and we have enemies that war against us, including our own flesh. We can feel depleted, we can feel exhausted, running on empty. We can feel battle weary. We can struggle in so many ways and all those struggles can take their toll on our emotions and our mental health and, and our bodies as well. Uh, what can we do? What, can we do anything? What can we do? And so many, um, there's so many good advice and so many resources out there that can help us to achieve physical strength or mental strength. We can practice good diet and exercise, good mental health practices, self-care, so many things. And all of these things have merit. But at the same time, we all have us, because we're human um, and we're weak, we have this pull to seek comfort, to self-medicate, to still seek comfort in ways other than God himself. And this can sometimes result in life controlling habits or addictions that we all struggle with at times. But let me challenge you, let me challenge you first and foremost, to focus on your connection with God. Instead of trying to address all those other things in our life, focus on your relationship with God, your spiritual strength. Focus on your connection with God and allow his strength to come into you. 
his strength and power. As Paul said to Timothy, spend your time and energy in training yourself for spiritual fitness. Physical exercise has some value. Yes, it does. But spiritual exercise is so much more important. It promotes a reward in both this life and the next. Jesus said, I am the vine. He said, I am the vine and you are the branches. And if you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Listen to the words of Jesus. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Yet when you allow him to, when you allow yourself to be connected to him as a branch is to the tree, to abide in him and that life to flow into your life, into our life and, and through our life and out of our life, his power and strength in us. We can do all things through him who strengthens us. What are those things? Well, some of those things are the Holy Spirit controls our emotions. We forgive those who hurt us. Uh, and offend us. We can be patient. We can be kind with difficult people. We can actually resist temptation. We can have the self-control we long for. We can control our anger instead of our anger controlling us. We can, when everything in us feels like quitting, we can persevere and carry on when we know it to be right. We can actually listen to others when all we want to do is to speak and to defend ourselves and our own opinions. We can keep our peace. We can remain calm when we receive bad news or when we find ourselves in stressful situations. We can stay peaceful. We can reach out to others with life-giving words. When we're feeling tired, when maybe we're feeling irritable or low or have little energy, we can be generous in our giving when we have needs of our own. You know, all of these things seem like impossibilities without the strength and power and grace of Jesus. But you know, a strong spirit will get you through all manner of problems, whether they be financial, whether they be physical or spiritual, anything in fact that the enemy sends your way, anything the enemy sends your way, you can overcome. David said these words, for by you I have run through a troop, by my God I have leaped over a wall. I love that imagery, don't you, of David running through a troop and leaping over a wall and having such strength. And yet David had to press through, he had to press through to a place of victory. He didn't always feel so strong and powerful. Um, he had many, many challenges and yet he became like a rock, unshaken and movable. Um, as Jesus said, you know, we have to build our life upon the rock. We have to strengthen our spirit through our relationship with God. And then we will become rooted. We will become grounded. We will become anchored. We will become established in God and in his word. We will develop an overcoming spirit. What do we overcome? We overcome fear. We overcome negativity. We overcome doubt. Um, we overcome anxiety. We overcome temptation and so many more things you know we um we stay focused on the kingdom of god and his purposes we seek first his kingdom we declare words of faith instead of words of negativity in fact what we're actually doing is we're building a wall of protection a spiritual force field so strong so strong that when the storms of life hit us we stand like a rock you know i want to ask and challenge you this morning is your spirit weak or is your spirit strong? And we all have areas in our lives that we need to strengthen ourselves in. We all have areas. But it's important, as, as we think in the natural, so we think in the spiritual. There are three things I want you to consider this morning. One is diet, your spiritual diet. You must feed your spirit faith food. Faith food. God's word, God's word is our prim primary source of strength. It contains all the nutrients that we need to nourish us, to build a strong spirit, uh, to give us life, to give us vitality. As Jesus said, man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. The word of God is a power and a vitality, all of its very own. We take it in, we digest it, it becomes part of us and it, it goes to work. What are you feeding on? Can I ask you that question? Is it social media, news channels, shopping sites, Netflix? You know, uh, where are you getting your primary food from? Analyse it in the light of God's word. What is it feeding you? What is it producing in your life? 
You know, it may be producing fear or anxiety or envy. You may be feeling dissatisfied with life or you may be feeling anger or, you know, or, uh, you may be in a place of unbelief. Um, you may be struggling with lust or sexual immorality or perversion in your thought life. And, you know, these things have an effect, what we take on, what we read, what we take in. And if we take in the word of God and we allow it to get down into our spirit, then it will come out of our words. It will come out of our actions. It will come into our thoughts. The same is true, the opposite. Be careful what you watch. Be careful what you read, what you listen to. And be willing to eliminate anything that is feeding you in a negative way. There were many, uh, many years ago, I remember being at an airport, buying a book I love to read. And I always have to have a book on the go. And I didn't have a book, so I bought, purchased a book. And I didn't get very far into the book. And the Holy Spirit said, you can't read that. You need to throw it. What did I do? I threw it in an airport bin. You know, it's not for me to tell you what to watch, what to read. That's legalism. But what I am going to tell you is... Remember the ear gate. Remember the eye gate. Take care to guard your hearts, to renew your minds if you want to grow spiritually strong and be obedient to the gentle promptings of the Holy Spirit, which will always lead you on a pathway of life and blessing. I want to be on that life, that pathway of life and blessing, not just for me, but for my children and my children's children. So the, I know that the word of God is life for my spirit. It is life giving um, nourishment for my body, mind and spirit. It is medicine for my soul. Secondly, exercise. You, we have to be doers of the word, not just hearers. We have to put it into to practice. Exercise, you know, we might have the diet right, but we might be struggling in the area of exercise. But let me tell you, if you want to be strong in any particular area, you must not only feed on the word, but you must exercise your faith in that word. You must exercise it in word and deed. What is God speaking to you about through the word that you're taking in? You know, it may be in the area of giving. It may be in the area of um, witness and reaching out to people or maybe in the area of forgiveness. You need to exercise your faith muscle. The more you exercise that faith mu muscle, the, the stronger you will become in that very area. I remember many, many years ago when we were young, you know, we were struggling in the area of giving myself and Gary and, you know, we were feeling that it was defeating us. So we went to my dad who felt, we felt had made, made major breakthroughs in that very area and we asked him, what are we doing wrong? And my dad gave us this wisdom. He said, keep on doing what you are doing. How wise is that? Keep on exercising and doing in the very area that you feel you are weaker in and one day you will know that your faith will respond powerfully in that very, very area. You know, in the area of serving as well, I want to mention serving because this is a prime example of how we exercise our faith. The renowned psychologist and author of The Human Mind, Robert Wilson, I was reading something about him and how he gave a lecture on mental health one day and he was asked by a person in his audience, what would you advise a person to do that felt they had a nervous breakdown coming on? Should they consult a psychiatrist? And he said something surprising. He said, go find someone in need and do your best to help that person. You know, that may sound to us like a very simple answer to a complex issue and and it probably is but there was amazing nuggets of a nugget of wisdom in that advice and that is to use the talents and gifts that god has given you to serve others use the time use the resources you know and the energy that god has given you whether it be small whether it be big whether it be in your own home with your own family members or in your neighbourhood, in your street, in your community. Maybe people on the other side of the world in the area of missions, if it be visible or invisible. You know, if you want to be spiritually healthy, serve, serve. Thirdly, rest, rest. We need to build, uh, um, if, we are need to, if we are going to build ourselves strong spiritually, we're going to have to rest. You know, we, this means that we have to lean upon God. We have to trust him. We have to cast our cares upon him. You know, we, will, we don't allow the enemy to steal our peace. We keep our focus on Jesus. We keep our eyes upon Jesus. 
We pray without ceasing. We allow that spiritual prayer to come continually out, out of our spirits and to be anxious about nothing. The word actually tells us that when we pray in the spirit, it edifies us spiritually. You know, we build each other up, build, build ourselves up, we edify ourselves. And we must remember to do this. Pray in the spirit. Use your, your tongue language, your spirit language. Show me a person who is strong in spirit and I will show you a person who has taken time to rest in the Lord. Rest in the Lord. Cast all your cares upon Jesus for he cares for you. And, you know, like you, I'm sure you can think of many, many people in your life who have been spiritually strong, who have left you a legacy, or they're currently giving you an example of areas in, in your life that you, that you can see strength in them. And I would say, you know, put those things into practice. Don't give up. Keep doing good. You will reap a harvest. Uh, I was thinking about my grandparents and when I was thinking about this and how they lived a life of faith how they lived through the simple routines and habits of reading God's word and, you know, just going about their life in simple ways. But they always kept their eyes on Jesus and doing good. They always kept their eyes upon Jesus and they ended their race well and they passed into eternity well, both of them. And two things I remember. I remember my nan in her last days throwing her arms upon the pillow and saying, safe in the arms of Jesus, safe in the arms of Jesus. I remember my granddad being asked when my nan was really ill how he was coping. And um, they were very, very old, you know, at this, this point in their lives. But, and he said, you know, I married her for better and worse, for worse. I've had the best. I'm not going to complain when I have the worst. That is, to me, true spiritual strength. So let me encourage you now, as we come to the end of this time, you know, de develop your strength, make it a focus, make it your big focus to become strong spiritually, to receive strength and power from the God who is strong for us. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Let your prayers Feel the room. Come now, Lord, and take your place. Oh, we wait on you. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Let your presence fill. Oh
wind flow like a river filled with living water living water living water Thank you, Helen, for that incredible preach. And thank you, worship team, for leading us in such an amazing time of worship this morning. I also want to thank every single person that's helped make this morning happen and bring church to your front rooms. If you want prayer, please get in touch. Uh, we'd love to hear from you and we'd love to hold your hands up virtually um, and stand with you in prayer this morning for whatever it is that you want prayer for, please get in touch. www.mosaicchurch.co.uk forward slash pray. We'd love to hear from you and stand with you in prayer. Yes, we definitely would. And um, just to bring this morning to a close, I am going to pray with you all. Lord, thank you so much for an amazing, another amazing morning. Thank you that we get to do this, even under the circumstances that we're going through right now, Lord. I thank you for everyone that is tuning in this morning, Lord. I thank you for everyone that has put all the effort into making this morning happen. And I pray that as we go on with our weeks, that we can take forward the words that were spoken from Helen, Lord. We can remember the, per the brilliant time of worship that we had, Lord, and we can feel hope and we can feel encouragement during our week ahead, Lord. In your name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in and um, comment, like, subscribe, and we cannot wait to see you again next week.